Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been forever since I've talked to you guys. I haven't uploaded a video in like a few weeks and I promise I'm not abandoning you guys. I have been filming videos periodically, but nothing's really been coming together. So I've kind of taken a bit of a step back and I'm trying to kind of regroup and decide the direction that I wanna take this channel in. I have so many cool ideas that I'm working on for videos for this channel and I'm really really excited but it's kind of hard to like come back and switch directions when I just haven't posted in so long so I wanted to upload just a short video. I'm gonna be testing out some watercolors today that I actually got for Christmas and I never made time to test them out. Not only have I not been uploading videos a lot, I haven't been painting very much, which is just like such a bummer to me because I love painting and it like makes me happy. So I'll be just doing a little bit of painting. We'll test these out just so if you guys are interested in a little bit more of a higher tier watercolor, we'll see how these work. They're supposed to be really good. I've heard a lot of good things about them. And I also wanted to share with you guys a project idea I had for myself this morning in the shower. Um, if you're interested in helping me out out with a sort of project that has to do with watercolor painting then just stay tuned until the end of the video otherwise let's get started with the painting part of this video so I want to tell you guys just a little bit of the background on these paints really quick before we get started so these are the Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolors they come in a package like this Obviously I took them out, but I'll put a picture up on the screen of what they look like when they're like in the box. These watercolors come in like a million different varieties of sets. So you can get them in like sets of six or 12 or 15. So according to the description on Amazon, these watercolors are supposed to have good transparency, excellent tinting strength and good working properties. The set that I got comes with a tiny little pocket brush and that just looks like this. It's just a little teeny tiny baby paintbrush. It just looks like that. I don't know if I would ever necessarily use this unless I was bringing these guys on the go with me. For little tiny details, I picked up a couple of these brushes. I already have some small detail brushes that I've just been using for the last six months or so, but I've been pretty rough on them and I think I damaged them beyond repair. So I went ahead and picked up some more and I promised myself that I would be nice to these. If you're curious, they are the brand Master's Touch and I picked them up at Hobby Lobby. So they're kind of a middle of the line paintbrush. So it's not, it's not the most expensive paintbrush you can buy. The more time I start spending on art, the more willing I am to let myself buy nicer art supplies because I think it's good to invest in yourself and invest in things that you enjoy doing. So as we break into these watercolors, one thing that I found kind of interesting was the way that they package them. So first of all, each one of these little pots was individually wrapped in plastic and then in a second, wrapping that had like the information about the color and stuff on it. So that was kind of a pain to take all of that off. And something I also noticed that is probably standard, but I've never had nice paints like this before, is actually each of these little pigments is just like loose within this plastic casing. So they kept on falling out and I <laughs> didn't know what to do. So I basically just took some Elmer's stick glue and I put a little bit on the back of each one and then I stuck them back in so I don't know what most people usually do but I just I knew that if I left them loose like that if I put them back in this case and then I opened the lid like I would probably have half of them falling out every time so the journal that I'm going to be working in today is this little guy I actually went and bought this today not just for this video but it's called the visual journal by Strathmore I've never used a journal by this brand before, so I'm kind of curious to see how it works. If you're interested in the stats, it's got 140 pound watercolor paper, 44 pages, and it's a 5.5 by eight inch size. So just a little guy. All right, so I feel like the best place to start would just be to quickly swatch all of the different colors. I'm just going to use the little baby paintbrush that they provided in the kit, and I'm just gonna go in and swatch each of these so we can see what we're working with. First impressions are, these are beautiful. That's really pretty. I've never really used nice paints before. I've always been curious 
how much of a difference it makes when you're using, you know, really nice, really high quality watercolors versus when you just use, when you just use kind of that first tier inexpensive watercolor. It's kind of hard to tell just from a swatch how a color is going to kind of perform when you're painting, so I'm not trying to get too excited yet, but I really do like how bright these colors appear on this paper. My water is starting to turn into this like, like deep sea trench color from mixing all of these together. Now we are getting into like the browns, which I don't really use very often. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I tend to have a sort of like bright color scheme to my artwork. While I don't necessarily follow like specific colors, I tend to use kind of bright pastel-y colors. Now I think I'm just gonna make myself a little key at the bottom of this page so that way I can see all the names of the different colors. Okay, so while the swatch is finished drying, I have to decide what I want to paint. And I am thinking of doing a little recreation of this photo. I've had this picture hanging in my room for the last little while and I really like it. It's just these little daisies. I almost said sunflowers. They're not sunflowers, they're daisies, I think. But I like the yellow and the green and the dark brown in this picture. So I'm thinking this would be a fun one to experiment with. So in order to save time, I'm not actually going to sketch this out. I'm just gonna go straight in with the paints because I'm in a bit of a hurry. And also this is just kind of for practice. I like to use this top portion of the, I don't know what you'd call this, I guess the painting tray to mix colors and also dilute colors. So I found this really nice yellow that kind of matches the yellow in the photo, but I'm gonna dilute it a little bit with some water. So I'm not gonna be doing like necessarily an exact replication of this photo, but I'm just kind of using it for inspiration for how to draw these flowers. I think the trick for a photo like this, where you have a really dark background in contrast with light um, foreground, which meaning like the flowers are really light and you've got like a dark backdrop, I think it's easiest to go in with the lighter colors first before you start doing any dark. So I'm gonna do like all of the petals before I do any of the like background or the center of the flowers. Okay, so I've kind of reached a point where I can't decide if I should paint the background dark or just leave it like this because I kind of like the way that this looks, but I feel like it still might actually look really nice with like a dark contrasting background. But I'm afraid I might just like totally <laughs> screw it up if I do that, so I don't know. I think instead of doing a dark background, I'm just gonna go in and do some darker leaves to just give some contrast and then we'll just be done with it because I don't, I'm just afraid that it might be way too overpowering if I try to do like a really, really dark deep green like is in this picture. These leaves are definitely more uh, abstract than realistic. I am not like very good at drawing leaves on plants. I have I always seem to struggle. Like what the heck even is that? Is that even a leaf? I don't know. Okay. I kind of like the way that that looks. I think I'm gonna stop it. So I thought it'd be cool to start a project that also incorporates you guys because I would love to have you be a part of sort of my creative process a lot more. So my idea for this sort of project would be I do a set of 30 or so paintings all inspired by photographs. Instead of just looking at photographs online or taking photographs from my camera roll, I thought it'd be really cool to have you guys send me your pictures and I can recreate them in paintings. This not only helps me kind of get out of my creative rut, but it also gives me sort of a sense of purpose because I'm hoping that if you guys do want to send me pictures that it'll be something that's special to you 
or something that you would like to hang on your wall. I would love to be able to paint like 30 pictures and then be able to mail them to you guys so that way you can have it. I want to get more practice and develop my style of painting a lot more and I just thought that this would be a really cool way that you guys could be involved in that process if you are willing to. I'm planning on filming the entire thing, filming each painting and, and you know talking my way through the process and what the photo is and, and if it has any special significance to that person. I think art is so much more meaningful when you have an actual purpose for creating it. Anyways, if you guys are interested in sending me a photo, it could be anything. Your morning cup of coffee, your favorite pair of shoes, a picture of you and your dog. I would love to be able to recreate it and then be able to send that to you and you could have it. If you are interested in sending me a photo, I will have my Instagram linked down below. You can just send it to me in a direct message. All right, have a wonderful day and I will see you guys very soon, hopefully, in another video. Bye!